Welcome to Managing Stress, Ways to Cope Through Times of Uncertainty. I'm your host, Danilo Donoso. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist at Santa Monica College's Center for Wellness and Wellbeing, and I specialize in helping students gain control of their depression, anxiety, and stress. And I want to share with you some of the tools you will need to enhance your ability to cope during this time of uncertainty. So we're gonna talk about stress and its negative impact, managing stress levels and strategies and the tools you will need to decrease toxic levels of stress. Before we do that, let's talk about who we are and what we do. We at the Center for Wellness provide a range of psychological services. Our mission is to help SMC students enhance their overall personal well-being, and we offer short-term therapy and counseling and are currently taking new clients for teletherapy. So please contact us if you're interested, 310-434-4503 or cww at smc.edu. Send us an email. There's also uh, more important information at the end of this uh, presentation uh, regarding contact information, so please stay tuned for that. So let's just kind of first acknowledge that this is a very tough period of time that we're going through now that will uh, create unique challenges for us all. I mean, we are experiencing a time of great tragedy and uncertainty on a global scale. And I think now more than ever is to really try to show yourself some self-care and self-compassion. Self-compassion is the act of extending compassion to oneself. Um, and it's generally um, utilized during times of suffering. Um, it's really just being warm to oneself. Um, an expert in self-compassion is Kristen Neff, and you can find her lectures and meditations on YouTube. Just type in Kristen Neff and self-compassion, and her videos and lectures will come up, and you will really benefit greatly by doing that. A friend of mine sent me a uh, post from Instagram that uh, a, a licensed clinical social worker sent at Alyssa Marie Wellness. She writes, my life has changed dramatically in a short period of time. My nervous system and body are learning to adjust to this new routine. My mind is filtering through information about how the pandemic is impacting myself and the world. My body is communicating to me that I deserve to rest and I will honor this without judgment. This is not lazy, this is coping. This is unlearning the need to be constantly doing something, unlearning the social construct that my worth is based on my productivity. I choose to rest. I think this is an excellent reflection about how Alyssa Marie is practicing self-compassion and also demonstrates a need that we really have to take care of ourselves right now. And one way I think that many of us can approach this is to just try to be as good a friend to yourself as you would be to others. So let's talk about stress. Why care about it? Stress and performance, stress and the immune system. Too much stress equals psychological and physical health challenges. So stress weakens performance levels. And as a college student, you are consistently expected to perform and perform at the best of your ability. And I know that's really tough right now. Uh, but when you think about it, your job is to pass your courses and learn as much as you can while doing it. So stress can really decrease your ability to do that. Um, also, stress impacts your immune system negatively, and you don't need me to tell you how important it is that we keep your immune systems as strong as possible right now. And uh, too much stress is associated with numerous psychological and physical health challenges. And these are good enough reasons alone to proactively engage in stress reduction techniques. So let's talk about one conceptualization of stress. We have the type one versus the type two stress. The type one is that saber two tiger. The type two are, the, it's the constant worry. How am I gonna pass this class? What if I don't get into the school of my choice? How will I pay rent? And the list goes on and on. So that type one stress, you see the saber two tiger jumping out at you, right? It's kind of what the stress uh, response was designed for. That saber two tiger jumps out at you and you either fight the beast off or you run away or get eaten. But if you survive the encounter, what happens is after that uh, sympathetic nervous system kicks into overdrive and you're able to survive, uh, that compensatory relaxation response kicks in and you spend the rest of your life basically talking about how you survived that saber tooth tiger encounter, right? Um, it has a natural immunity boost, it's adaptive, and when it occurs, 
Um, there are physiological processes that help you survive and recover. With type two stress, and we see the image of somebody who looks like they're experiencing type two stress, right? Their, their head in their hands. It's a stress that we all know too well. It's that constant worry that comes with modern life. It is when we are frequently in a state of prolonged arousal with no way to solve any of those problems anytime soon. So with the tiger, at least you can do something about it. But with type two, you worry, you experience fear, and your body just doesn't get to dip into those resources that you do with a type one stress event. So here's what it looks like in a diagram, this type two stress. So here we see the Yerkes Dodson human performance and stress curve. And as you can see, right smack dab in the middle of that X axis there, that where that stress um, is being uh, monitored there. So you see in the middle there is this sweet spot of optimal performance where you just have enough stress where you feel energized, focused, and the work feels effortless. But if you move a little bit more to the right, you see there's that certain threshold you cross before a performance falls apart and you experience fatigue, exhaustion, ill health, breakdown, and burnout. So uh, you might be asking yourself, why does this guy care so much about how we perform? And what does it have to do with stress? Well, look, when you're performing at peak levels, there's a great chance that you're doing the very things that fortify you against toxic levels of stress. So you are likely, as we see in this image here, you're more likely to be engaged in cardiovascular exercise regularly. Um, you are more likely adhering for the most part to a balanced and nutritious diet, and you are allowing yourself time for self-care and fun. And you are getting the rest and sleep you need, as we see in this image with this dog who's fast asleep. So sleep typically is eight to nine hours for the college age range. And you might be saying to yourself, look, it's just impossible for me to, to do all these things right now for a variety of reasons. And I get it. I would just encourage you that if one or more of these aspects is off, you are going to find it more difficult to perform at peak levels. So um, you want to just pivot towards trying to do the best you can to get that eight, nine hours of sleep. Pivot towards trying to get, incorporate some exercise into your daily routine or weekly routine. Um, you want to eat a nutritious and well-balanced um, diet. Now, if it's difficult for you to do that because you're feeling food insecurity or experiencing food insecurity, please contact us. We can definitely connect you to resources or visit the SMC uh, homepage. From there, uh, go to student services and then health and wellness and you will see a tab for food insecurity and how many programs that we have available for you. So either check it out on the website or contact us for more information. We'd be glad to help you get connected with that. But once you're able to um, pay more attention to how you're eating, the fact that you're exercising and getting enough rest and getting some fun and uh, self-care, you will see that you will have a greater ability to, to, to deal with the stressors that you encounter in your life in a much more adaptive way. And a helpful byproduct of this is that you will feel so much better. Okay, so a, a component of this that I think can be also very helpful is to ask yourself, what do you want? You see an image here of a child, looks like they're riding a suitcase through uh, the clouds and they're on their way to uh, a destination that they that they're seeing it there in the, in the in the photo so one way to help reduce stress is to establish a goal or better yet have a clear vision of what it is in life that you want what is it that you deeply want for yourself clearly all of you want something better for yourself otherwise you wouldn't be here at smc so start asking yourself Get specific. What is it deep down that you truly want in this life? Do you want to start a nonprofit? Do you want to own a business? Do you want to invent something that will change the world and help people? Ask yourself what it is that you want and why you want it. Because when you don't have a goal or a dream, you're kind of like a boat without a rudder, simply floating in the ocean. But when you know what that goal is, you will gain momentum, a sense of purpose and focus 
And this will give you more of a rationale to engage in those um, type two toxic stress um, reducing behaviors like we talked about. And it is my experience that stress, anxiety, and even depression can develop when you are not moving in a direction of value and meaning for you in your life. So please take the time to do this. Okay, guided imagery, and we see a kid who looks like they're imagining space travel and visiting different galaxies. So our imagine, imagination can take us down all kinds of stress-filled roads when you think about it. It's kind of a double-edged sword, our imagination, because our imagination can really stress us out, or it could take us on a calmer path. So we can really help find the relief that we need by listening to guided meditations that take us on a peaceful tour, uh, kind of like what this kid's doing, or maybe even back to a time when we had the quality or qualities to better equip ourselves for the stressors we currently face. And there are a ton of apps and YouTube videos that offer guided meditations for stress and other difficulties that you may be grappling with. Try them out. They do work. Uh, we also have a, a really nice COVID-19 mental health resource page that uh, Lisa Golden put together. Just go to our health and wellness webpage. You'll see on the lower right hand uh, a yellow tab that says COVID-19 mental health resources. Click on that and you'll see a lot of great apps um, that will be beneficial for you during this time. Some more helpful tips. Meditation. Uh, we see an image here of Jet Li. Looks like he's in a meditative state there. This practice involves sitting comfortably, focusing on your breathing and bringing your mind's attention to the present moment without drifting into concerns about the past or the future. This form of meditation has enjoyed increasing popularity in recent years and is helpful in getting you in the present moment, which is precisely where you wanna to be to feel less stress. Now, why is that? Because it's usually when we are thinking about the future, like either 20 minutes, two days, and or two weeks from now, when we are stuck thinking about the future, it's usually when anxiety and stress comes up. And the opposite occurs when we're thinking about the past. When we're stuck in the past, it's usually depression and sadness. So those Buddhist monks had it right those thousands of years ago and just exercising that muscle and getting you back into the present moment. And meditation can help you do that. And when you think about it, it's only in the present moment where you really have control over your life. Because in the future, whether even if it's 20 minutes from now, it's just anticipatory fantasy. It is yet to happen. Same with the past. You need a time machine to be able to go back in the past. It's only right here and right now that you can really do something. And I think that also adds to the uh, um, calming impact that meditation and getting into that present moment has. Dr. Allison Brown is our meditation guru, and she's also the coordinator of the Center for Wellness. And she organizes Zoom drop-in meditations that are amazing. And for those of you who have um, uh, participated, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Please contact us or visit our webpage for updates on those workshops. Okay, don't forget to breathe. So what you to do is you want to put one hand over your chest and one hand over your belly. And I want you to inhale. And as you inhale, I want you to imagine your belly filling up with air like a plastic bag. And what that does is, it's not a chest breath, so that's why I put one hand over your chest. What that does is, is it grounds you, calms you down, oxygenates your blood. So I'm gonna get up and show you what it looks like. Because for those of you who haven't done that, it's a little awkward at first. Okay, so what you do is, I'm gonna inhale for three seconds, and as I do that, I'm gonna stick my belly out. So one, two, three. And exhale. So it's about a three second inhale, three to four second exhale. One, two, three. Let's do it together. One, two, three. Is that belly coming out? Okay, one, two, three. Okay, how does that feel? You know, the great thing about this intervention is that you can do it on the bus, uh, 
while driving, in line at the grocery store, and it has a calming effect that is fairly quick. So please, if you are feeling like, even if you're getting into like a panic-like state, that is a great tool to calm yourself down, get you grounded. Okay, so just to recap, remember the fundamentals. Eat a balanced and nutritious diet. Get that exercise. Anxiety and stress hate exercise. Um, there's plenty of psychological research that backs that up. Get sleep. You'll find that those, those small stressors that you, you encounter during the day are exacerbated when you're not getting enough sleep. Please do that. Engage in meditation, mindfulness, and, uh, and some deep breathing like the one I showed you. Um, schedule fun. Reach out for social support. That is so important. Um, we are not islands unto ourselves. We need others to help us get through, uh, particularly when we're feeling stressed or down. Uh, decrease demands and identify resources. So um, make a list of that which is getting in the way of you living a life of meaning and value. And just take out a piece of paper. And what are those demands? What is it that you have to do and that is kind of maybe making that struggle that much more difficult for you. And then I want you to identify resources. So um, on that same page, write a list of the resources that are available to you. And I can help you out with that. Go to the SMC webpage. I mean, my goodness, there are a ton of resources available to you there from anything, anywhere from speaking to an academic or career counselor to finding resources for housing security and food security. When the demands outweigh, and especially if they far outweigh the resources that you perceive that you have or don't have, um, that's when that, those toxic levels of stress come in, okay? So, uh, and, and again, be patient and kind with yourselves and others during this time. You'll find that that will go a long way in helping you cope and giving you that psychological flexibility to get through this as best you can. Okay, so important contact information. So for 24-7 emotional support, please call 800-691-6003. This is just for SMC students, this number. So again, uh, if it's like three o'clock in the morning and you feel like you just need to talk to somebody, call that number, 800-691-6003. You can also text the crisis line, text COURAGE to 741-741. Uh, if you or someone you know is feeling like they're going to hurt or kill themselves, call the, uh, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. That's 1-800-273-8255. That's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's a, there's a great team that picks up the phone when you call 1-800-273-8255. You can also call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 800-799-7233. That's 1-800-799-7233 if you or someone you know is in an abusive relationship. That's a great number to call. You can also call 911 in the event of an emergency. If you want to report a crime in or around campus, call SMC Police at 310-434-4300 and download the LiveSafe app. I really like this app. The LiveSafe app enables direct and discreet two-way communication with your cell phone to school safety officials using text, picture, video, and audio. It also lets you virtually walk your friends and family home with a feature I like called Safe Walk. So I really appreciate that you took the time to listen to this workshop today um, from all of us at the Center for Wellness and Wellbeing. Uh, we really hope to see you all in person soon. Until then, Please be kind and patient to yourselves and others. Take care.